Okay. Uh, first of all, I guess I should point out um, that today was another beautiful day. Um, weather outside is beautiful, but it's scaring me. It's making me wonder if this uh, global warming thing is a scare or is it actually... You know, I mean, we keep up with these higher temperatures. What's going to happen to us in the summertime, you know? I don't know. But it was a beautiful day today. But that's not what this video is about. I, and forgive me. Forgive me, America. Forgive me, black folks. But I just now caught wind that we are in Black History Month. And uh, it didn't occur to me till somebody on Facebook decided to mention it. And real quickly, what I noticed is that everybody that showed up on the page um, to talk about it were black. This is an American holiday and the only people that showed up on the page to talk about their celebration of black history were black people one white guy showed up and he was blessed by the fact that I said to those um, that were, you know, bringing up the topic of Martin, of, I'm sorry, Black History Month, they, you know, when they brought it up, I also mentioned, and don't forget, well, first of all, I mentioned that I have some books, because that's, that's what the topic was. The topic was about, oh, look at these books about black, of, of black people that were writers. Okay. I'm gonna get into that. I'm gonna get in, into that in a second. And then, um, I told her. I says, "Well, I have some books right here, and I don't really get into worrying about whether the writer of a book is black or white or Asian or whatever color he is. You know, if it's a book, somebody wrote a book." It's written in English. It's talking about a topic that I've been concerned about. I'm going to read it. Okay? I don't care uh, if more white people write books more than blacks. And I don't care if, you know, if black folks write books. But like I said before, if I can find it. Let me see if I have it here. I have a book written, here it is, I showed you this before, I have a book, and one of the people that she mentioned on Facebook in her little thing about Black History Month was this guy here, Langston, Langston Hooges or whatever, and, you know, I, this is, this is, I, I mentioned this in another video that I did on racial stuff. And uh, this here book here is all about, these are writings by black people. And this is what they were talking about. Don't forget books that were written by good black people. Well, there's about two or three stories in here that are just black people, um, black writers being funny about stuff that went on um, in their experience coming up in the black community, and that's fine, okay? Um, black folks arguing and fighting over who has the better car or whatever. You know, comics. And... Uh, and there's one, the la the very last one in here is, <coughs> oh, 
the very last one in here is, um, you know, it doesn't take a black writer to write that. Anybody could write it, but I guess the guy was African, so he used his culture to get a point across, and that's fine. That's fine. So there's about like three or three stories in here at the most that are just stories that apply to everybody. All the rest of them are about racism. There's even one in here where, you know, uh, the black writer in here expresses what he thinks other people think about black people. Or hopefully not, but it sounds like he himself thinks that about black people. See? Um, and, 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 and see, that's why I don't get into so much of this worrying about if we have written enough books or if we are in enough, if there's enough of our stuff in museums and all this kind of stuff. Now, let me say real quick, um, I do believe that whatever black people do, if they write books or if they practice medicine or they or you know they want they 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 were noted note they were noted for being the number one college professor of a certain year or whatever you know Benjamin Carson BB King you know um, whatever we should be in the museums with white people okay when excuse me when white people are here or in museums, they're in there for the same thing. And whether they were white people that were Russian or German or, or uh, you know, white people that were, um, you know, Slavic, if, if I'm saying that right, or whatever, they, they're in the museums with all the other white people. They're in the museums with all the other Americans. And I don't see Spanish people, okay, and even Native Americans that are noted for things that they've done in this country in their own museums because of their race. I noticed them in museums with white folks, okay? But anyway, on this Facebook page yesterday, talking about Black History Month, there was one white guy that showed up, and he showed up because I said, and let us not forget that white folks um, march with Martin Luther King. Because whenever you feel that you need to remind us of our freedom or remind us of our slavery or remind us of the Civil War, or remind us of, you know, things, you know, remind us of Jim Crow or remind us of things way back when, it's usually dealing with white guilt or or uh you know black disappointment okay and so what i'm saying here is starting with this this book it's a nice book but starting with this book um and starting with black history month and martin luther king you know, I, I guess there's about, there's MLK Day, there's Martin Luther King Day, there's Black History Month, and then there's two other, two or three other black holidays, okay? And uh, I remember uh, back when I was working in the old uh, uh, East Liberty Electroplating, uh, Electroplating Factory. Not too far from here at all. Glenn Shaw. Um, 
and you know, I dealt with I dealt with some racism in there. I'll be honest, I dealt with some white people in there that didn't like me. We're looking for a reason to fight me because I'm small and I'm a nice guy and I don't give them all the lip and all that like the other black people did and I don't get up in their face and act tough like all the other black people did and I don't I'm not quick to let somebody you know st you know it's going to take a little something for you to step on my toes and and I I'm the kind of guy I take it upon myself to you know believe that you're sorry for stepping on my toe you know um I'm, that's the kind of guy I am I'm a nice guy even though I'm small I don't feel, I don't have short man syndrome. You know what I'm saying? I'm a nice guy. And so when I worked there, you know, there were people that wanted to use that against me. Black people, as well as white people, that wanted to use that against me. And other jobs I've had um, have done the same thing. White people and black people using me being a Christian, me being a nice guy, me not taking offense about everything, me not having short man syndrome and all this stuff. You know, me not being some kind of tough, angry guy that just always getting his toes stepped on. You're not getting on my black dandruff every day. You know, um, you know, you you call me the N-word, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lose my mind. I'm gonna look at you like you done lost yours, you know. And that's the way it's always been. Last time somebody called me the N-word in front of another black person, okay, uh, you know, it was like, I'm the one, I got, you know, I took the person to the office, that's what you're supposed to do. Um, but this guy wanted me, this guy wanted to beat me up because I didn't go after and go and beat the white dude up, you know. I says no, nah, you know, oh, I'm, I, uh, you know, and I've, I've had people, you know, just recently on this job I had, you know, um, this girl felt that, you know, white people got to talk to me a certain way. Well, <coughs> and I told her, he talks to everybody like that, not just black people. But you know, I'm a deal with it. I'm a deal with him, and I did deal with him. I made sure the boss was there one day when he said something offensive to me. And I made sure she heard about it. She, I made sure she knew what he was doing. I made sure I took note the way I carried myself. I took note of what he was doing. And I made sure she caught wind of it. And that was the last time he ever did that again. You, you, you got to know how to carry yourself, man. You got to know how to... Uh, you know, you got to use wisdom. You got to be smart. Um, I've dealt with everybody that's ever been an enemy of mine, whether they've been black or white. I've dealt with all of them. And uh, there's nobody um, that has ever taken advantage of me. But this man was happy that I said that. So he, you know... Um, he, being a white man, had read the common thread, decided to chime in, and he says, yes, Mr. Cruz, and he talked about a friend that he grew up with that was, no, he talked about, um, some friends that were related to somebody. See, white people know the history. White people go, no, no, they know their history. You think that, you know. They don't pay attention to their history, black folks. Uh, they do. This white guy knew his history. He also knew the history. He also remembered, you know, the marching and the rioting and the protesting and all that stuff back in the day. And he told me, he says, he told me about a pastor friend of his that marched with Martin Luther King. His house was blown up and everything like that, you know, um, you know. And uh, nobody decided to chime in. All they cared about was whether he read any black books, you know. Um, and um, this lady, friend of mine, got on there and she says, well, Martin Luther King didn't, uh, 
march by himself. That's what I just said. Okay? White folks marched with them. But she's thinking, oh, well, she's thinking of the black folks that marched with them. You know. Look. We got all these black holidays. We got about four or five of them. What white holidays do we have besides St. Patrick's Day? You know what I'm saying? How come white folks, okay, first of all, how come white folks don't have like four or five holidays and call them, and they're called white holidays, huh? How come, how come there ain't no white holidays where, where white folks get to take the day off and it don't apply to black folks? See, if white folks take the day off, because of some white holiday, they're going to make sure, they have to make sure, because they don't want to make the black kids angry, they have to make sure that black folks get that day off too, even if the holiday don't apply to them. They're going to make sure black folks get that day off. Okay? Because they don't want you calling it slavery. They don't want you calling it Jim Crow or something like that. Okay? But if you really feel guilty as a white person, just like when I used to, not too long ago, I uh, was working a job up here at the old fabrication shop. And uh, I was there for about three, four years, I think. And one day on Martin Luther King Day, You know, uh, I I always show I show I always show I always work I've always worked on Martin Luther King Day. Some black folks take that day off, and if you want off, you can request off on Martin Luther King Day. But I told you know what I told the white dudes when they went to teasing me about Martin Luther King's Day. They says, "Hey, what you doing here?" I says. Uh, I work here just like you. They says, you forgetting what day it is, brother. Don't you know your heritage? You forget what day it is. I says, what day is it? They says, it's MLK Day, man. Martin Luther King, man, you know, what, what's up? What you doing here? I says, oh. I said, you know what? I didn't, e I didn't even take note. I'm sorry. And they says, well, you can go home if you want to. You you know, it's your it's your holiday. I said, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean it's my holiday? I told them the same thing I told her on Facebook. White folks marched with Martin Luther King. So if it's my holiday, it's also your holiday. All of us should be off. Why isn't it a national holiday? Why is it a holiday? I call them white guilt holidays. Why is it a holiday for black people, but it's not a holiday for white people? Because did what did 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 was we doing anything that the country didn't agree with when Martin Luther King was marching? Were we not supported by our government? Did not white people march with Martin Luther King? It's like, to me, if you're going to have white guilt, don't be funny, phony with it. First of all, to you white people, if you're going to really, really, really claim to have white guilt, don't be phony. Because people know when you really, really, really feel some kind of way about slavery and what happened to us and all that kind of stuff, so to speak, our ancestors and all like that. I don't feel a certain way about it, but if you think that you're supposed to feel a certain way about it in this day and time, okay, don't be phony. That's all I'm saying. And black folks, this is what I'm saying to you. Okay. 
Would you rather somebody say they're sorry and keep on doing something wrong to you? Or would you rather them just stop instead of apologizing over and over and over again? Let me say that again, black folks. Would you rather somebody say they're sorry for everything every time just keep on saying they're sorry, but they keep on doing the same nonsense to you over and over and over again? Or would you rather somebody not even apologize, just stop doing it? Just stop doing it. Which one would you rather have? See, I remember, and this was a brother, this was a black man, who kept coming in late. He would come in late, and he knew that he was supposed to be there on time. But he felt that, you know, as long as he's 10, 15 minutes late, he's not really late. You know, he had that mentality. Okay? So, um, what he would do, because he fi figured I had an attitude, what he would do is come in late and then hold me up by picking an argument with me. And then he would say I hated him. He would tell my boss and tell all the other staff that I don't like him, that I hate him. I'm out to get him. But he's the one that's coming in late. He's the one that's holding me up from going home by holding me there arguing with me over dumb stuff because he knows he feels guilty because he's late. But yet, he don't want to do what he needs to do to stop being late. See what I'm saying? I don't need him to keep apologizing. That's what he did. He kept on apologizing. And he wanted to like do things that were illegal to show that he was sorry. Well, hey, man, I'll do this for you. No, 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 no. You're not going to do that for me. You're going to bring your butt here on time. That's what you're supposed to do. That's the policy. You're supposed to be here like five minutes before the hour. Okay? So that we can brief and debrief, and then I can get out of here, and vice versa. Everybody relieves you early. You're the only one that don't relieve on time. Okay? But, you know, he kept on doing his garbage. And he did say he was sorry sometimes. But he kept on and kept on and kept on doing it. And so white guilt to me is kind of phony. Ain't nobody really guilty. Even the people who sit there and try to, you know, just like the man I talked to yesterday on a park bench. You know, um, and I sat there and I talked to him and we talked about the Lord for a minute and all like that. And then he got on his high horse when I started talking about the Lord. He couldn't. He didn't understand what I was talking about when I got into like biblical details. So to make himself feel like he was older and more mature than me, he decided to pick on me about black issues. He started telling me how much I'm in debt. How do you know that? Who said I was in debt? You said you used to be in debt. You started preaching to me when I sat down here that, oh, you know, whatever you do, the best thing you could do in the world is get out of debt. And I said, amen. I never said I was in debt. You assume I'm in debt. Okay, which I am in debt. But he didn't know that. I didn't tell him that. And I'm not in, in as much debt as he thinks I'm in. But he assumed that I'm in debt, so he figured, oh, you're not going to preach to me about Jesus because you're a typical black guy that's in debt. But um, I think white guilt is phony, but I also think that black folks needing black, or I'm sorry, black folks needing white folks to be guilty is phony. You don't want, you don't, you're not waiting and, and praying and hoping for the day when white people will apologize to you. No, you just want to make sure, like I do, 
that it doesn't happen again. I don't need you to apologize to me. I just need you to make sure it doesn't happen again. Okay, it's not that complicated, but black folks, you keep making it complicated. And so we got four holidays that are black, and we are free as African Americans to take those days off if we choose to. But all the white holidays, other than, you know, uh, religious holidays, all the white holidays, white folks got to work. And our black butts got to work too. On them, on them white holidays. And how many white holidays are there? I know St. Patrick's Day. What other ones are there? You know, and I don't know if you, some people would say, well, St. Patrick ain't got nothing to do with white folks. Well, I don't know. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. It's kind of even funny to even call anything a white holiday. But, oh, God, if somebody ever does call anything a white holiday, oh, man, we done went from Black Lives Matter to some other kind of matter. Oh, Lord. Don't do that. Oh, my goodness. But I don't keep up with, you know, black holidays. Because to me, if Martin Luther King Day, if I should be off on Martin Luther King Day, if I'm celebrating Martin Luther King Day, I want the white folks to celebrate with me. Okay? You know, any black holiday. And, and also, again, why are we putting, why are we separating Stuff that went on in here went on here in America as black people. Why are we separating that from what went on with white people here in America? Amongst these white people that have done exceedingly well, there are a handful of black people that were behind them or in the midst of them that did exceedingly well. Why do we need to put them in a separate museum? separate from the white folk. Okay? Why do we need to, you know, why aren't all these people being celebrated, but all these black folks are being celebrated? And I know when I was coming up in school, I read about black folks, and black folks seem to forget this. I read about black folks in my social studies class in a predominantly white school. I read about, you know, uh, black folks and, and everybody from the days of being a slave all the way up to that time that done exceedingly well and, and, and done so well that they were in books and and all like that. But black folks don't pay attention to that stuff. Just like the man on Facebook. White people have to get together and celebrate the white people that marched with Martin Luther King. Black folks don't really care to mix that with the fact that black folks had to march in the first place. It's like a pacifier. It's like you it's like you know white folks are giving us black folks these pacifiers like we're babies or something. You got to give us a black you got to give the black baby a black pacifier so that he feels comfortable. And then he cries again and you got to give him another black pacifier so he feels comfortable. When does it end? When are we going to actually accept the fact that we're free? When are we going to accept the fact that, you know, it may not get any better than this. So what are you going to do now? When are you going to stop? When are you going to stop crying and whining like a baby? And, and, and just live your life. 
knowing that you're never going to let it happen to you again. You don't need white people to apologize to you. You don't need white people to feel guilty. You just need them to make sure. And I'm going to make sure, and I want them to make sure that it doesn't happen again. Just like anything else in life. Let's not waste our time worrying about who's going to say what. You know, I watched this guy on YouTube, and he decided to create a channel on uh, how white folks have treated blacks, you know, here in America. And he was like, get he gets on there and he gives white people the third, you know, uh, degree. He tears them down in grave detail, man. And these black folks, oh, they love that. They get on there and they, they say, oh, yeah, he's preaching. Oh, my man's preaching the word, you know. But then these same black people, listen to this white man get up there and apologize and put white people on this big guilt trip. And then these black people will go out there and join Black Lives Matter. They'll go out there and start crying and rioting and protesting and whining about something all the time. They're never content. You drive your own car. You go to work every day. You live in a house. You raise your family. You have your culture. You have your food. You know, you 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 have your style and your, your nightlife and your daylight and your, you know, you have everything that you want. But yet you still feel like white folks owe you something. And what are they going to give you? Because they don't know what to give you. They're just going to keep handing you that same old pacifier. Okay? To get you to think. And that's the way I see these black holidays. They're like pacifiers. You know, it's like handing out pacifiers. Again, why can't black folks be in a museum with white folks? Why can't black white folks get, uh, why can't everybody be off on Martin Luther King's Day? I mean, both black folks and white folks are guilty for that. So, I hope this uh, gives you something to think about because, um, Again, like I said in another video, I don't support blackness. I support what really works and what really, really, um, what really helps us as a nation, not just black folks. Forgive me, but that's just the way I am. So, um, like, dislike, subscribe, leave a comment. I'd appreciate it. God bless you.